Okay, Job chapter 38. 37 chapters, Job has been dealt with three friends in Elihu. Now it changes. Then the Lord, Jehovah God, answered Job out of the whirlwind. Now, whirlwind is a particular expression, and many times it's mentioned in the Bible, but it's also mentioned with Elijah going up as a type of rapture. <clears throat> and there's going to, Job is a picture of the, of the tribulation saint going through the tribulation, 42 chapters, 42 months of trials and troubles and problems. And there's going to be something with a whirlwind in the middle of the tribulation. <laughs> God's going to speak. You're going to have Moses and Elijah. Then in the tribulation, there is a rapture. Not a church rapture, but a rapture of the saints in the tribulation. And God speaks. Who is this that darkens the counsel by words without knowledge? No, Job and his three friends have been talking wrong. Scholars do it. Bible perverters do it. Gird up now thy loins. Talking to Job. Thy loins. God has a controversy with Job's insane. Gird up thy loins like a man. Dress like a man. Be a man if you're a man. For I, God, will demand of thee, Job, and answer thou me, God. Come on, Job. Be a man. Answer me. You know, when the Pharisees, scribes, Sadducees, and whenever they asked Jesus a question, Jesus answered a question. But when you go through the Gospels and when Jesus asked a question, he never got an answer. We can't not tell. Or there was no answer for an answer. Man thinks he's so big against God, but when you stand against God one day, you're going to find out how big you are not. All right, now we're going to get into the creation of God. Where was thou, Job? Now I'll be putting as the, who the pronouns are. Where was thou, Job, when I, God, laid the foundation of the earth? Nowhere. Listen, man didn't come to the sixth day. Declare. If thou, Job, has understanding. Come on, Job, tell me. Now, Job doesn't have Genesis. Job would hear out of his mouth and through legends and, and tales and, and carry on from father to son to father to son to father to son. Job, you're so good. Where were you when I created all things? Tell me about it. Who has laid the measures thereof? How wide is the moon? How vast is our solar system? How big is the star? God calls the stars by names. If thou, Job, knoweth, or who has stretched the line upon it? And it's funny, when you look at a map today of, uh, of the earth, or look at a globe of the earth, there are lines of, of latitudes and longitudes. There it is in the Bible. Where did latitude and longitudes come from? Came right there from, from God speaking to Job. And man only got that from God. Man probably doesn't even know where latitude and longitude came from. Why is it we have we have lines on the globe and not checkers, not stars, not circles, not arcs, but we have lines. And God says, what about the lines? Whereupon are the foundations, plural, thereof, I mean, thereof fastened? Who laid the cornerstone thereof, of, of all creation, of everything? The Bible speaks about the earth has, has columns, has a foundation. When the morning stars, that's the angels, sang together. There's where angels sang. When God created the heavens and earth, Genesis 1 and 2, the angels were singing. The angels stopped singing when the choir director left heaven. 
Isaiah 4, 7 or 14, I forget. That's Lucifer. Lucifer was the song director in heaven. And you don't find singing through the Bible until it returns to, to Revelation when they sing the song of the Lamb of God and they sing the song of Moses in glory. They didn't sing when Jesus was born. The Bible says they said to the, to the shepherd. They didn't sing to the shepherd. Change the hymnals to correct the, uh, the, be corrected by the Bible. Don't correct the Bible by the hymns. And all the sons of God, angels, shouted for joy. So when God created the heavens and earth, when he remade the earth and, and reformed the earth in Genesis 1, the angels were already there celebrating with God. So the angels are older than the earth. How old? I don't know. There's no time period. Time does not show up. I forget what day it is when the sun, moon, and stars show up. I think it's the third day, third or fourth day. When God made the sun, moons, and stars, that's when time began. Before that period of time, it's eternal. Eternal before, and there's eternal coming. And eternal life, I mean, it's kind of a nice song. It doesn't mention Jesus, but the amazing grace. When we've been there for 10,000 years, there's no time in eternity. Or who shut up the sea with doors? How come the oceans don't overflow the earth like man fears today with global warming? Oh, all the earth is going to be covered with the, with the glacial melt. And God says, no, there's a door, and I have set that door, and the water can go in as far as I tell it to go. I gave the water low tide, God says. I give the water high tide, and it will go a little high with, with, the, with the full moon. It will go a little high down here in Florida when there's a hurricane nearby. And there'll be times, maybe a flood, but I have set a door by the tides. We don't need to worry about a complete global flooding like it was the time of Noah. There will be a global warming. God will destroy this entire earth and solar system and everything that's therein with, with heat, fervent heat, Peter says. Now, he let those doors go in the time of Noah. When it broke forth as it had issued out of the womb. When I, God, made the cloud, the garment thereof, so God made the clouds. And thick darkness, a swallowing bear for it. That's that, that's that um, in Genesis. That's that firmament. We can't see heaven because of that thick darkness. We can't see heaven because of the clouds. That's in Genesis chapter 1. God is assuming Genesis 1 before it was written by Moses. And break up for it my God's decree place and set bars and doors. God put forth high tides. God put forth the clouds. God put forth the solar system. And said, God speaking, Hitherto shall thou come, but no further. NASA. God will allow you to go in outer space, but you're going to go no further than what God will not allow you. One of these days that, that Hubble is going to bounce off where God says, okay, that's it. You can't go no further. You send your rockets, and they go as high as God said, that's it. Those rockets are going to boom. Man will not get to heaven to God's glory because God has set a standard. And here shall thy proud waves be stayed look at up look how great our space program is really get me in one of those rockets and send me to glory so i can see my loved ones well we can't do that we don't even believe in god then shut up with your stupid pride all you've done is throw litter all around the earth with all your broken satellites and your broken ships and your brokenness i'm not proud I get to God, to heaven, by Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ alone. Has thou commanded the morning since thy days? 
Can you step up outside at 2 o'clock in the morning and say, morning, come up. And yet uh, Joshua said one day, Lord God, hold the sun and hold the moon. And God said, okay, stay, don't move. And he told the king, he says, I'm going to set far the 10 degrees on the sundial. And God set it for. God can do that, not man. And cause the day spring. And the only other place you find that is Luke 178, reference to Jesus Christ, to know his place. Those stars have a particular, particular spot set by God. The moon is orbiting around or rotating around the earth where, where God wants that moon to be. No less, no further. That it might take hold of the ends of the earth. That the wicked might be shaken out of it. God can't stand the wicked. The wicked will have no power against God. It is churned as clay to the seal. And what they would do is they take a, a lump of clay, they would fasten it down, they, they would take their ring, and they would put the, their ring against that clay, and that clay was hardened. And you would have a molded seal. And they stand as a garment. Have you ever seen the Aurora Borealis in, in up north in Alaska? It looks like a curtain. It's standing. God's right. And listen, Job or anybody in Palestine this time have never been to Alaska. They've never seen the Aurora Borealis. God has. And from the wicked, their light is withholding. And the high arm shall be broken. That's the Antichrist, Zechariah eleven seventeen. That high arm of the wicked, he's gonna have he's gonna his arm is gonna clean dry up. His eye is gonna be taken out. I believe it's the right eye. So there's a reference in the Antichrist. Has thou entered the springs of the sea? Have you gone down as deep as the ocean? Now we got submarines, but they still don't know what's the bottom of those oceans. There are places in the, in the oceans of the earth, in the seas, they've never been. Has thou walked in the search of the depth? Can you walk down? You can't walk in the bottom of the ocean. You need oxygen. You need special submarines to go. And God's been there. God is there. Have the gates of death been opened unto thee? Jonah says there's gates and bars. Jesus said the gates of hell. There is something about the gates of hell in this earth that there is a place if you were to go and when you were to look at the entrance of hell, those gates would open to you and they would shut to you and never open. Jesus came in and out of those gates of hell and crossed that gulf and went over to Abraham's bosom, carrying the keys of death and hell. And I believe. You can take it literal that there's gates and keys and locks. I don't think you can take eating the body and drinking the blood of Jesus literal. I believe one day the trees are going to clap their hands like the Bible says. And hast thou seen the doors of the shadow of death? That's interesting. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Now, is it a literal door? I don't know. Jesus says, I'm the door. You better have that door to death. Any other door of, of religion or, or science or education will not get you to heaven. Has thou perceived the breadth of the earth? Okay, how you know how big is the earth? Oh, they'll tell you today, but do they have exact measurement? God knows. Declare it, thou, Job, knows it all. Come on, Job. Give me an answer. I only asked, I don't know how many questions God asked me. Answer me. There is a whirlwind in front of Job, his three friends in Elihu, and that whirlwind is speaking to Job, and God said, okay, answer me, Job. Now, who knows about the three friends, and who knows about Elihu that's sitting there with their mouth open? Come on, Job, answer me. Job has a problem. He is self-righteous. He has put himself ahead of God. And God's like, okay, answer me then. 
You so important? You help widows? You help the justice of people? Okay, well, tell me how big this earth is. Come on. Have you been to the gates of hell? Jonah will be there, but Jonah's a long, long, long way. Jesus Christ will be there. Jesus Christ is a long, 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 long away. The rich man is there. That's a long, 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 long way. Come on, Job, answer me. Don't be so high in yourself. Don't be so proud. Don't be, I've got the answers. Because God may say, okay, fine. Answer me. Be humble before you stumble. This is God speaking. Are you a know-it-all, Job? Verse 18. God said that. Where is the way where light dwelleth? Okay, how does science answer that one? Where does light come from? Comes from the sun. Well, the sun is heated up. and you know, Where does light come from? Give me the source. Write it down on a piece of paper. Job, where does light come from? In the beginning, God created heaven and earth, and there, and, and there was dark, there was faith in the deep, but it was dark, and God said, let there be light. The answer is God. Light came from God, Genesis chapter 1. All the atoms and the you're wrong, God. Job didn't have the answer. We do. We can go into our 66 books of the Bible, and we can go to Genesis chapter 1, and we read that it says, God said, let there be light. Job did not have that. If God came right now, and he's not going to, but if he were to come to the world and come in here and say, all right, where did the light come from? Say, God, it came from you, Genesis 1. Job didn't have that information. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy were written after Exodus 20. And Deuteronomy wasn't finished until Moses got near the promised land on the other side of Jordan. And as for darkness, where is the place thereof? So when I come over here to Genesis 1, where I got a complete Bible, I come over here to Genesis 1, and I got a complete Bible. It says, let me turn to my Bible. It says, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. The earth was without form and void and darkness upon the face of the deep. Where did that darkness come from? It came from God. God left the presence of the earth. And when God leaves, there's darkness. God's not in hell because hell is dark. And God said, let there be light. I'm one what scientists say about darkness. I don't care what they say about darkness. And that thou, Job, should take it to the bound thereof, that thou, Job, should know the paths to the house thereof. Come on, Job. Explain to me light and darkness. Yet that light will get you home. Knowest thou, Job, it because thou, Job, was then born? Or because the number of thy Job days are great. God knows how long Job's going to end and Job has no idea. Job is sitting there. He has been blasted by the devil with boils and ailments and pus and goo. Job is probably thinking, I'm going to die soon. And we come to the end of the book of Job and realize Job lived to a great number of years. Job didn't know that. But God did. God knows the days of our lives. We don't. Walk up to a, a psych and say, give me the month, day, and year, and hours, and minutes, and seconds, a.m. or p.m. Well, I'm going to die. Never mind the place. Tell me the exact time I'm going to die, and they can't tell you nothing. God can. God knew exactly that Jesus Christ would do would die on April 14th at 6 p.m. at the prescribed hour at the at 6 o'clock at the prescribed minute and second upon Calvary, according to the Passover lamb of Exodus 12. God knew that. And I believe men can 
They can further their years. There was a king that lived longer, 15 years. And I believe God can take away our lives by what we do. Smoking cigarettes will, will greatly reduce the lifespan that God has for you. Being foolish, according to the book of Proverbs, will eliminate a longer life that God has for us. Has thou entered the treasures of snow? Did Job know that there was nitrogen in snow used for fertilizing the ground for crops? I don't know if he knew that. God did. God says, when I make snow, I'll put nitrogen in it. Has thou seen the treasures of hail? I don't know what the treasures of hail is. Except for, for the insurance company when it bangs off, you know, windows and all that of cars and buildings. But God says there's treasures in hail. Even I don't know what that is. Now, I could look it up on the internet, but I didn't. Which I, God, have reserved against the time of trouble, against the day of battle and war. There has been times of war, of major wars and little battles, that the battle has been stopped because of snow and weather. They would have to stop and postpone the water, uh, the, the, the war because of weather condition. Tanks would not start. Tanks would not move during winter storms. The time of Napoleon and, and the great soldier wars that we have in the past, man, they couldn't travel in the winter. There wasn't enough clothing. There wasn't enough horses. There was death. There was just harshness of temperature and even the crossing of George Washington across the river it was cold weather can stop a war by what way is light parted okay we looked at where does light come from okay Job, explain to me the spectrum. When you take a prism and you put it out and you see a rainbow come, you got one color into a spectrum and then out comes the colors of the rainbow. Explain that to me, Job. Explain to me, Job, the rainbow colors. Job, I asked you where, where light came from. All right, let's get more advanced. Where does the colors come from? Do you realize they say that they find fish at the bottom of the ocean and they're rainbow color? Why? You can't see. It is pitch dark in the bottom of the ocean. Who sees those colorful fish? God. God does. God is suspended in glory of the wonder of color. And wait till we see New Jerusalem with all those gems that will sparkle by the light of God where there's no sun or moon. which scatters the east wind from the earth. Who controls the weather? God. Well, this Arctic wave and, and this little cold front, this no, it's God. Who has divided the water cause for overflowing of the waters? Water channels, water rhythms, water uh, cruising down the river. How come water does not go up? Because God said, I don't want it to go up. Why does water fall? Because God says fall, gravity. Man don't even know what gravity is. Why does that river do that what it does? Because God told it to do it. And you're not going to change it. Or a way for the lightning of thunder. God controls the lightning and thunder. God controls that, that lightning break. Whether the whole sky is lit up with one big light or there's a lightning bolt. That's by God. And man interferes with his electronics and his metal gears and all that. To cause it to rain on the earth where no man is. There are places on this earth where it rains and there's no population at all. God's in control. On the wilderness where there's no man. And Jesus goes to say that it rains upon the just and the unjust. And there are places where it rains where there's no one. No just and no unjust. And it rains there. To satisfy the, de the desolation and the waste of the ground. Listen, if it didn't rain in these areas, that place would be chalked. That place would be chaffed. That place would be dry, miserable land. And God says, you know what? Let it rain there. Let, let it be to my glory and my beauty. 
Give a place where a deer or the antelope can lay down and take a nap in the grass. And whatever, whatever animals eat grass and eat the fruit of the trees, though there's no man, let it rain so the animals can have a diet. And to cause the bud of the tender herb to spring forth. There's vegetation where there's no man. Job, why? Job, how's that happen? Job, it rains in places you don't even know. Answer me. Has the rain a father? Adam didn't have a father. God. Where did rain come from? Now Solomon will tell us the evaporation that it will go back up in the, in the sky and fall back down and come, you know, the, the rain cycle. But where did rain come from? Genesis 1. God. God said, let there be a mist upon the ground in Genesis 1. And then when, when Noah, the time of Noah, God opened up the first time it ever rained. And it rained ever since. When Noah said it's going to rain and God's going to flood out the earth, the people, what's the rain? What's he talking about, rain? What is rain? What are you talking about, Noah? Just as much as I tell people today in the street, there's a heaven, there's a hell. What's a heaven? What's a hell? I don't believe in that. Who has begotten the drops of dew? Well, you see in the morning, the, the, the temperatures rise and... No, no, God. And that is pure distilled water given by God. For the vegetation. And maybe a little calipers and the bugs and the ants. Out of whose womb a mother came ice. So the rain has no father and the ice has no mother. So you can rule out mother nature. She's gone. God just said there there's no mother nature. And the hoary white frost of heaven. Who gendered it? What marriage bed became of hoarfrost? Now I guarantee the Greeks and the Roman gods and all that have that answer for you. But that's not the answer according to the Bible. Weather comes from God. The King James 16 Bible. The waters are hid as with a stone. There's stones out there. You don't even know where they are. And the face of the deep, that's heaven, is frozen. Revelation 4, 6. Where there's a throne of God and before it, there's a, there's, there's a sea likened to crystal. A frozen body of water. If you were to go straight north on your own, which you can't, but if you were to do it, you and your spaceship would hit a frozen mass and you'd just bounce off it. You can't get into the throne of God because it's frozen. It's solid. But I bet you there's a door somewhere. And I know that door is Jesus Christ. So we just learned. What do we learn about heaven? There's a frozen mast up there. Can thou bind the sweet influences of Pleiades, of stars, or loose the band Orion? You know Orion. He's got that little three stars on the belt. Can you move Orion? Nope. Orion is so fixed in this location in the times of years that nav nav uh, navigational aids for ships and airplanes will use that as an aid. Oh, there's, oh, let's see, December 14th, Orion's right there, so I'm right here on the map. Navigation. Can you set Orion free? Can you let Orion go wherever he wants to go? No. Can thou bring forth Matharoth in his seasons, in their constellations? Can thou guide Arcturus with his sons? Those constellations in the heaven are going to run set by the rules, <coughs> by the regulations, and by the law of God. And you're going to do nothing about it.
You can send all the spaceships you want. You can call all the forces and get all the lightsabers and get all the, all the, all, uh, you know, your blazers and your lasers and your, you ain't going to change the stars. God has set them forth. Knowest thou, Job, the ordinance of heaven? Do you know the rules of heaven? Do you know the rules of every lunar object? Do you know the, the ordinance of every solar object? Do you know all the comics? Do you know all the planets? Do you know all the constellations? Do you know all the heavenly bodies? Do you know, Job? Job doesn't even know what's up there. We don't know how many stars are out there. We don't know how many galaxies are. Never mind our own. God knows. Can thou, Job, set the domain thereof in the earth? Can you put, Job, can you control the earth in its time and everything? No, you can't. Can thou, Job, lift up thy voice to the clouds? And abundance of water may cover thee? Now, Indians try uh, rain dances. That didn't work. Witch doctors probably pulled their, their, their potions and their, 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 their witchcraft and their magic. There's probably people all over this earth that they do things for the gods to bring rain. Man can't do nothing. If God says there's no rain there, you ain't going to do nothing to produce rain. That abundance of water may cover thee. Get rain. Can thou send lightnings? Try it. Say, I want, listen, I say every rainstorm, I say, Lord God, give, give us a thunder and lightning show. Sometimes he don't. I can't make a thunder and lightning. I ask God because I can't do it. Now watch this. Can thou send lightnings that they may go and say unto thee, here we are. There's your telephone. The phone rings. You pick it up. Hello. Oh, hi. How do you get the telephone? Electricity. What's electricity? Type of lightning. There's your telephone in the Bible long before telephones were made. Before Alexander Graham Bell made the telephone, God said, hey, a lightning will say, hello. Why is it when we pick up the telephone? Hello. Here we are. Where are you? Here we are. Who has put wisdom in the inward parts? Inward parts of what? Any inward part. Listen, doctors know a lot about the bodies, but they cannot prevent death. Scientists can go down and get gold and silver and uranium out of the earth, but they don't know what how the earth is. They say that the earth is a molten core of, of hotness. They don't understand its hell. Who has given understanding to the heart? God, Jesus Christ. Who can number the clouds in wisdom? Let, try that one. All right, I'm going to count one, two. Hey, where'd that cloud go? Where, oh, there's another one. Try counting the clouds someday. <coughs> Who can stay the bottles of, water, of heaven? Who's going to make it stop raining? God says, who's going to make it rain? God's like, okay, I'm going to make it pour. I'm going to make Who's going to say stop? Oh, God, come on. We're going to have a picnic. Come on, God, make it stop. Come on, it's not umbrellas, but you don't stop the rain. You can put tarps out. That's not going to stop the rain. It's still going to rain. It won't rain on you, but you're not going to stop it. When the dust groweth into hardness because of no rain, and the clogs cleave fast together, the ground's getting chaffed. Or the ground's getting wet and muddy and solid from the rain. Will thou, Job, hunt the prey for a lion? Okay, Job, if I bring a lion to you, are you going to feed him? The lion will eat you if he's hungry. Lions never ate God. And God has a man coming up pretty soon in the Bible. And God's going to tell that lion, Mr. Lion, yes, sir. There's a prophet coming on a donkey. Okay, sir. Ooh, yummy donkey. No, no. You leave the donkey alone. But I want you to kill that prophet and don't you eat him. Oh, God, come on. 
Lion, you kill that prophet, but don't you eat him and don't you touch that donkey. Okay. Mr. Whale, yes. I got a prophet for you. I want you to eat him, but I'm going to have you spit him out after three days. Then why eat him? Just do what I told you to do. Can you do that, Joe? Or fill the appetite of the young lions? All right, we have bird feeders for birds. Are you going to take care of that bird for the rest of that bird's life? That bird may not even come back. Yeah, we help God feed the animals, but will we feed them forever? When they crotch in their dens, they go inside where they live and abide in the cover to lie in wait. They're looking for food. They're, they're over there. They're getting ready to look for food. Job, are you going to feed them? Who provides... Who provides for the raven his food? Oh, how about the ravens that fed Elijah? The ravens probably, ooh, this tastes good. No, you give it to Elijah. Can you make a raven take food and <coughs> feed a man but not feed themselves? Try that one. When his young ones cry unto God, look at that. Animals cry out to God, feed us. So when you see a, a nest, a bird, cheep, 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 you know what they're saying? But God, call mom and dad and bring some worms over here, please. That's what the Bible, that is what the Bible says. Oh, they're cheaping for their parents. When his young ones cry unto God, talking about a bird. You believe that? I believe it. it's in the Bible. They wonder for lack of me. There's no food. They're going to go somewhere else to find food. God will direct them somewhere else. Why do birds go from north to south every year? Because there's going to be no more food in the north, and it's going to be down south. And God says, go down there. There it is. There it is in the Bible. Why do birds go south for the winter? Because God said, there's food down there. Go eat it. And I'll let you know when you go back to where you live. Plain and simple, just to believe God in his word. 